This is Mark Bidane, president of the Raiders. You're listening to Silver and Black today. On the line is Radio.com Sports NFL Insider, Michael Lombardi. You can listen to him on his podcast, The GM Shuffle, available on Radio.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Insider calls are brought to you by the new gas-powered Sprinter from Mercedes-Benz Van. All right, Michael, let's get into this. Yesterday, of course, we we all read your piece uh, on The Athletic about Derek Carr where you said that you felt there's a significant disconnect between the coach and and the quarterback. Talk to me a little bit at the top. What makes you feel when you watch these two work together and you watch Derek Carr on the field, why do you feel that there's that disconnect there? I I just don't, you know, the disconnect isn't personal. The disconnect is that they don't like each other. I think the disconnect that I'm referring to, and I try to explain it in my piece, is how Carr plays and how Gruden visualizes the position to be paid, played. And I think, you know, those that's the disconnect, I think. And that's why I cited Rich Gannon as, as really, if you want to know what Gruden really wants in the quarterback, look at Gannon's ability to make plays with his feet when the play breaks down, be able to ad-lib, not have to make the perfect call, get everything done at the line of scrimmage. It's an extension of him on the field. And I think the disconnect that I'm referring to is that. You know, it's just not exactly – you know, what he wants in terms of the position. And I think what I try to do is frame the question this way. And this is before the Pro Bowl announcements came out. But if you have a coach you're paying $100 million to, who you think is one of the best coaches in the league, you have a quarterback that you basically paid a lot of money to, and you feel he's one of the best players in the league. And then you have two offensive linemen that are named to the Pro Bowl. And you've got a tight end that's an alternate. You've got a rookie running back who's sensational. He was an alternate. And another offensive lineman who was an alternate for the Pro Bowl and a fullback. Shouldn't you be better than 10 and 20 over the last 30 games? Yeah, no, that's true, Michael. And, and you know, the one thing, too, that I, I've been talking to people about is one of the things, it's, it's very interesting. In, in Raider Nation, amongst Raider fans, there, there doesn't seem to be any middle here. People either really dislike Carr in the position or they don't see any wrong in him. It's it's a very polarized audience. And, and for me, I try to look at it in the middle uh, and see this, but a lot of the folks who love Derek Carr still and want him to be the Raiders quarterback, they argue that he doesn't have enough tools. But I think the argument you just laid out, which is, hey, you got this running back, you got this tight end. I went back and forth with somebody today who said, well, he doesn't have all, look at all these guys who have these great wide receivers. And I said, yeah, but you know, Darren Waller was a thousand yard receiver. It doesn't matter if he's a tight end or a wide receiver. Am I wet on that? Or, or do you look at it the same way? I mean, look at Tom Brady's career. I mean, uh, other than Deion Branch and Randy Moss, tell me the receivers he had that want one for him. Mm-hmm. You know, and look, I, I think the quarterback, look, let's just take Ryan Tannehill. Take Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill comes off the bench. The Titans score seven points, get shut out, score another 14 points, lose, right? They're on a three game losing streak, can't score any points. They put Tannehill in. Now they're one of the best-scoring teams in the National Football League. They lead the league in yards per attempt. They didn't add anybody to the roster. Mm. They made one change at quarterback. They didn't fire the offensive coordinator. They made a change at quarterback. They benched Mariota. They put Tannehill in, and all of a sudden, A.J. Brown's a sensational player. All of a sudden, Corey Davis may actually play like a first-round pick, not like the fifth pick overall. And then Derrick Henry's sensational. I mean, you have a Pro Bowl runner back. You have three Pro Bowl, off, four Pro Bowl, three Pro Bowl offensive linemen, and a tight end. You should be lighting the scoreboard up. You shouldn't score twenty points in the third quarter. Now you've got to make a decision. Is it because of the offense? Is it because that you don't think Gruden's been contemporary enough? You know, obviously you paid him a hundred million. All Raider fans, Bob Chucky, they don't see anything wrong with the coach. But his first time he was there, he was 16-16 and 16 after two seasons. And the third season, he went to the conference championship game. I don't see that. I think this defense is atrocious. There's no doubt about that. They don't play very good defense. They're not fast at all on defense. But even with that being said, the problems come back to they can't score points when they need to be able to keep up. The Titans go in there and outscore them. It's 21-21 to 21 at the half. The next thing you know, it's 45-21 game over. Again, joining us on the Radio.com uh, Sports NFL Insider, Michael Lombardi, is here on Silver and Black today. Hey, Michael, it's Chez. So you're talking about all these great players, young players, and they are young players. You know, this isn't the second stint of Art Shell going 2-14, and 14, but I'm starting to question Coach Gruden's kind of 
you know, play not to lose style. So we're, we're kind of uh, going around the circle here and finding out who's to blame. What, what percentage of the pie does, does coach deserve for these deficiencies? Well, I think, you know, look, I think John's trying to manage the game to get the, you know, he's trying to manage away his defense, right? So he knows his defense can't stop anybody. Right. I mean, and, you know, this is the defense that, you know, you pick Farrell, the fourth pick overall in the draft. Crosby's a nice player. You get him in the fourth round, really good pick. But they don't have any speed at linebacker. You can't cover anybody in the back end. So I think he's trying to cover up for that. And he's trying to control the ball. And I think he's trying to stay out third and long for his quarterback. So he's trying to win first and second down. He's trying to manage the game. And when you're trying to manage the game, you're saying to yourself, I don't want my quarterback to really have to go in there and and, and wing it. And look, you know, when Carr was with Del Rio, I mean, you can argue the team wasn't any better with Del Rio. They had some lucky breaks, but they're 25 and 24 in the three years Del Rio's there. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't think this team's going to get to 25 and 24 over the next year and a half. Okay, so like you pointed out in the article, you know, with Jack Del Rio, John Gruden, you know, he didn't inherit a bad team there, but, uh, you know, Gruden chose to tear it down anyway for a full, a full rebuild. So, you know, after two, almost two full seasons, how would you assess this rebuild process? Uh, you know, I went, on, I went on this show with Scott when he traded Amari Cooper, when right. he traded Khalil Mack, and I said, look, I'm all for the rebuild if they got a plan and if they're going to show what they're doing. And if they don't draft a receiver, then I'm all for the rebuild. But this has been classic, I think, of of what the way John builds the team. And, and I don't know if there's a true, here's the plan. They fixed the offensive line. They're trying to fix the defensive line. But I agree. I mean, they took two of the best players and haven't really been able to replace them yet. I mean, you're not going to replace Cleo Mack, you know. And they didn't want to pay Cleo Mack, but then they paid Antonio Brown. Right. So on one hand, I bought the line. I didn't want to pay players because I was of the school like the Patriots. We're not going to pay players. We're not going to pay somebody $20 million other than a quarterback. Everybody else, we're going to have debt. But then they turn around and sign Antonio Brown and they pay him, which was exactly what I said to Scott. If that happened, then I'm off. Yep. I think Scott, remember that. I Absolutely. Said that you did. If he goes out and pays for a receiver. I'm off. I'm off. And I knew he was going to do it. That's why I said <laughs> it. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, and that's the thing, too, with, with all of this and, and with – with the Derek Carr situation, I think I think this is is increasingly the the, the chatter around this, um, as I'm sure you're hearing with your sources, continues to to increase. But with Carr himself, I, I talked about it on our show uh, this past week on Tuesday. I said, listen, I'm I'm noticing, and maybe I'm trying to be Michael too much of a dime store psychologist, but when I see Derek Carr in the post game press conferences and I hear what he says and he's talking about his family, look, we all love our family, we all have kids, we all spend significant time away from them in the business that we're in, but he increasingly is talking more and more about that, and it seems as though psychologically he might be checked out of silver and of the silver and black. Not saying that he doesn't go out and do his best on Sunday. I'm just saying though that from a mental perspective, you know, you've worked in the front offices of several NFL teams, including the Raiders. If you were in the front office of a team right now and you saw how he's he, he's talking about things and and how he's carrying himself, would you have concern? I, I do, and I think that's that that's the disconnect that I'm talking about. Uh, you know, you're talking about whether you like Gruden's game management or not, whether you like Gruden's construction of the team or not. The one thing you can't argue about Gruden, he's highly competitive, and he's going to try to do whatever he can do to win, and he's gonna he's going to be vocally demonstrative in his actions. And I think he wants a quarterback that is more like him. And, you know, you saw it on Hard Knocks. You saw it. Can't you do it like I do it? Do you remember that line? Oh, yeah. And I think that's the disconnect that I'm talking about. Uh, look, do I think Derek Carr is, is, is a good player? Yeah, I do. Do I think he's the leader of the team? No. Do I think you want him to be the guy? Do I think he's going to be the most mentally tough guy on the team? Probably not. No. And I think there's ways around it. You know, Vinny Testaverde wasn't all those things either, and yet he was able to have a great career. And I love Vinny and signed Vinny, but you got to have a different team around these kind of guys. And they're not necessarily the guy who's going to lead the team. The quarterback and the head coach have to have a personality that fits that then demonstrates what the team really wants to be. Yeah, and I, go ahead. And late, well, lately we've been hearing a lot of, of excuses in these press conferences. you know. So, yes, yeah, so let's go back to Derek Carr having four different coordinators in six seasons, the lack of a running game, the leg injury, the back injury – two rookies starting on the offensive line, you know, the inefficiencies at wide receiver. So, you know, from your front office perspective, 
Are these excuses justified, or is it time to move they're on? From all, I mean, they're just look. I mean, they're all. I mean, did Andy Reid look? Andy Reid took over the. He took over one of the worst teams in the league when he went to Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Alex Smith. How many coordinators did he have? Right. <laughs> right. All right. And then he gets Andy Reid as another coordinator, and he has a career year. I mean, can we stop the nonsense? Right. right? Yeah. Like, I mean, can we stop the nonsense about this? Right. When when guys go to you know, Kirk Cousins has had different coordinators. Right. He's having his career year. Why? Because Mike Zimmer figured out through Gary Kubiak by way of Kyle Shanahan that the only way that Kirk Cousins is going to be a great player and earn his contract is to play in the Shanahan slash Kubiak slash Shanahan system, play action passes, outside zone run game, move the pocket. That's the only way he can survive. If he has to be in a drop back pass game, that all bets are off and everybody's going to hate, hate Kirk Cousins. So don't give me this, well, it's five different coordinators, all that. That's just excuses. That's what they're saying about Mitchell Trubisky in Chicago. <laughs> you know, it's his footwork. It's, you know, he's had different, you know, they're not calling the right place for him. When you're going to that, when you're using those as excuses, you really don't have a good player. Right. No, and, that, and I agree with that. Again, we're talking to Radio.com Sports NFL insider Michael Lombardi about the Raiders, about Derek Carr, John Gruden. And, and you know, Michael, I look at Derek Carr, and, and I think, you know, situational um, and systems and, and teams, like you talked about leadership, uh, you know, I look at the Bears. You just brought up the Bears. I think Derek Carr on the Bears would be fine, right, with that defense and the leadership and what you have going there versus the Raiders and their coaching and their personality and where they want to go. But if you're if you're looking at this situation and, and let's say the Raiders decided to move on from Derek Carr after this year, which they have a natural out there from a, from a, a cap and a money perspective, if they do that though, there's there to me there's not a lot of veterans out there. And would John Gruden have the patience to to go get a young quarterback? Maybe have to give up more draft capital, even though they have all these holes, and move up to get a quarterback? Well, I'm going to ask you a question since you know I mean, I know you're interviewing me, but I'll ask you: a <laughs> young quarterback has John Gruden ever developed? Exact none. Yep. You can get back to me on that if you like. <laughs> to think about it. Yeah, so, I mean, he loves quarterbacks, you know, the but to the, the answer to your own question is he's going to want a veteran guy. I mean, you know, they've already come out and said they're not sure Deshaun Kaiser is not going to come. I, I, I sit three thousand miles from Oakland. I, Deshaun Kaiser is. There's no chance that John Gruden and Deshaun Kaiser would ever work together. Now, Mayock had him as his number one quarterback the year he came out in the draft. Go back and look at Mayock's rankings that year. Mm. The number one quarterback in the draft before it all before he started to change it coming off the spring was Deshaun Kaiser. Yeah, I mean, that's fact. You, you can look it up. That's fact. You know, and we all look. I'm not saying that to 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 to, to say something about Mike. I mean, we all go through that. We all make those things. We all go through those periods of oh, okay, here's where we are, and here's where what we're trying to get done. The reality of the situation is simply this: is is you can't get rid of Carr until you finish the sentence. Who's going to play quarterback for us? Right, right. Who is there going to be that guy? Yeah, is it going to be Tua? And that's why I put in there that they may be moving together. They actually might be neighbors in Las Vegas. But at some point, the asset in Carr is going to be too valuable for him to not want to trade. And maybe he trades it for a young player in the draft, and we'll see where that goes. Yeah, it should be interesting. All, all I know is that it, it just seems as though it's headed towards a change. Whether or not that means Derek Carr is in Las Vegas next year or he's not, I guess remains to be seen. Uh, Michael, thank you so much again, and make sure you check out Michael's podcast, The GM Shuffle, available on Radio.com or wherever you get your podcast. Also, I'm going to add to Michael, I know you'll love this, your best-selling book, Gridiron Genius, a master class in building teams and winning at the highest level. Great, great Christmas gift. So if people haven't bought it, It's one of the best books I've read. Make sure you do it. Michael, thanks again. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Take care. All right. That was Radio.com Sports NFL Insider Michael Lombardi. Insider calls are brought to you by the new gas-powered Sprinter from Mercedes-Benz Vans. Listen to Michael Lombardi on his podcast, The GM Shuffle, available on Radio.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, don't go anywhere. There's more Silver and Black Today coming up next here on CBS Sports Radio 1140.